At a fundraising dinner for Trump, Trump's not daughter-in-law, Kimberly Guilfoyle, struggled to get through a stump speech and it didn't go well for her. At the dinner, Guilfoyle, who is engaged to Trump's son, Don Jr., can be seen trying to give a speech about the fake news and whatever. It doesn't matter what she was trying to talk about because nobody else in the room cared either. Excuse me, if you're talking, you're being very bad, you're not being best. Right, singing? So they say the fake news that women don't support President Trump. As she spoke, the attendees continued mingling and taking selfies and having their own conversations, so Guilfoyle was basically just attempting to speak over all of them. So instead of somehow commanding their attention back, which admittedly would have been very difficult for her to do at that point, she decided to reprimand them instead. She said, quote, Excuse me, if you are talking, you are being very bad. You are not being best. Now, being best is, of course, a reference to the former First Lady Melania Trump's anti-bullying project, Be Best. It's normal for the First Lady to have an issue that they champion during their time in the White House, and this was Melania's. As soon as the Be Best campaign was announced, it was met with sharp criticism. One, because it's grammatically clunky. Like, don't they have focus groups for these types of things? And two, because her husband is the biggest troll of them all. The campaign had poorly defined goals from the beginning, maybe intentionally. If you don't have goals, you can't fail to reach them. The campaign seemed to accomplish little besides send the first lady on a trip to Africa to visit orphanages and some landmarks, and it produced the Be Best hashtag on social media, which was most often used in attacks against her own husband, who was very often not being best. She also tried to give a speech to youths in Baltimore about the opioid crisis, and she was booed. Thank you, Jean, for the warm introduction and for inviting me to join you today for such an important event centered on opioid awareness. Thank you. Thank you so much, First Lady. Appreciate you. Beyond that, it seems she did very little actual work to help the opioid crisis, which was already an ambitious undertaking for a first lady who, unapologetically, never wanted to be first lady in the first place. But she did say publicly that opioids are a problem and we all need to work together to solve that problem. And we are very grateful for her very meaningful contribution. So at least Kimberly Guilfoyle wasn't booed, but arguably, what happened to her is worse. You know how it goes. If somebody hates you, at least they're thinking about you. If they just don't pay attention to you, they don't care about you. She is not a serious, relevant person to these people. They would rather take selfies rather than listen to her talk about the fake news media again. And keep in mind, this is Trump's third consecutive run for president. He hasn't updated his main talking point since 2015, nearly 10 years ago. They're old. They're stale and they have failed twice so far to secure him the popular vote. Attendance at his rallies has declined over the years because at this point, if you've heard him speak once, you've heard him speak a thousand times. He hasn't said anything new in a really long time. Most presidential candidates by this point would have proposed some kind of solutions to the problems that they're identifying within society and within government. Trump doesn't have solutions. He garners support through commiserance. Even the Republicans know that they are not doing anything. So they did impeach the Secretary of Homeland Security because they just didn't think he was a good Secretary of Homeland Security. In any other sane Congress, that is not exactly an impeachable offense. But that is how these Republicans in this Congress chose to spend their time. They keep trying and failing to impeach the president. They've been trying to impeach him since before he was even sworn into office. They've thus far been unsuccessful doing so, even after dedicating way more time and money to it than any American should be okay with. Mitch McConnell's strategy going into the 2022 midterms was literally not to release any kind of Republican legislative agenda. And last month on Newsmax, Republican Representative Andy Biggs of Arizona said, quote, We have nothing. In my opinion, we have nothing to go out there and campaign on. It's embarrassing. To which the anchor responded, quote, I know, the Republican Party in the Congress majority has zero accomplishments. 
Tom Cole, a Republican from Oklahoma and the House Rules Committee chair, said the thing that we have been saying over here on the left for years, quote, the big accomplishments here are what we stopped, not what we got done. So in other words, the Republicans are acknowledging that their main objective is never about progress, but obstruction. And last one, Republican Representative Chip Roy of Texas went viral last month when he said, quote, I want my Republican colleagues to give me one thing, one, that I can go campaign on and say we did. One. It's hard to feel bad for these Republicans because this is the bed their party intentionally made and laid in, knowing that the consequences would not be good. The Republican Party has been kept in a chokehold by Trump and his supporters, but it's a loose chokehold. They're the ones, they're, like, they're not even trying to get out of it. They've let themselves and their party get to this point, to the point of ineptitude and impotence. So keep peddling those same terrifying stories about the fake news. Keep playing those same tired cards and keep elevating people to positions of fame and authority who either haven't earned the right to be in the room or don't want to be in the room at all. I'm not mad about it. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out my podcast, Modern Context. New episode is out today, and we're talking about Lupercalia. It's a fun one. Thanks.